Sometimes things don't turn out quite as you plan them. Or more specifically, sometimes the tree you planted is not the tree that grew. Well, more of that next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here in October of 2021. So if you guys have been following us along, you know that we've spent the last couple of years planting over 170 fruit trees here on this six acre farm. And what you see behind me is one of those. Now this tree behind me was part of our first set of plantings here in our peach section of our orchard. Now the tree behind me here looks a lot like a peach, but after talking to Reed at RSI Growers who sold us this tree, we're both pretty confident that this is actually rootstock and not a peach tree. So now it's gonna be hard to pick up on camera, but if I flip the camera around and look at a peach tree next to this one, I think you'll see what we're seeing as well. So this will give you an idea of kind of how these two trees look. This is the peach tree we're gonna be replacing this with. We'll talk about that here in a few moments. This is the tree that uh, is the problem. It, it, whether or not you can pick it up, I don't know, but the leaves on all of our peach trees are very similar to this one. Now they look a lot alike, probably from where you're at, but these leaves here have a much lighter green color. Also a little bit different as far as the shape. They're not quite as sharp as these are, and also just kind of the, the shape of the leaf is a lot different. What we're thinking on this tree is this is one of Reed's rootstocks. Now, we have two different rootstocks of his here on the farm. This one I don't believe is Hansen, but either way, from what he says, this is an almond tree basically that doesn't produce all that well. Even when it does, the actual shell on the almonds is extremely hard to crack. So we have almonds on the farm, we have three almond trees, but the intent of this one was to have a peach tree here. So before we let this thing get any bigger, we need to do something that'll probably make a lot of you cringe. That's coming up next. We moved the wood chips back. What I wanted to show you, this was supposed to be an early amber peach tree. We have four of them. Peach trees, by the way, are part of the production on the farm. So that is something that we intend to have as a commercial or cash crop. So obviously an almond is not one. <laughs> and the assumption is we'd have peach trees off of this. Another reason why we are needing to uh, swap these out. Now, something that we didn't notice, we were planting, I think we planted 20 or 30 fruit trees in a single day. This was one of those trees. When we picked it out, I wasn't paying too much of attention as far as the tree itself, we do typically look at the grafting points, but because we bought so many trees at the same time, I didn't even notice this. But as we pull the wood chips back, one thing that is definitely missing from this tree is a graft point. <laughs> that should have been a dead giveaway. I do remember this tree looking really well when we bought it, which is probably why we chose it, but there's no graft point. And typically, especially on a tree that's this old, it's been in the ground for about a year and a half, you can typically see the graft point and there isn't one on this tree. So another dead giveaway that we're dealing with rootstock versus the tree. In fact, I wanna show you the early amber next to it. The graft point is very, very obvious. So here's another early amber. In fact, it's right next to the one we're dealing with today. You can see the graft point right here very, very clearly. That is where the rootstock down here meets the scion and, or the known variety in the early amber up here. The, usually the rootstock is much thicker. This one is, it's about the same diameter as the tree we're dealing with today. And then it obviously gets skinnier here. We've got a couple others that look exactly like this. So again, another indication that we're dealing with a tree, beautiful though it is, that's rootstock and not productive for us. So back to that other tree. So what I'm seeing here as I'm pulling away the dirt is exactly what I expected. 
you know, we design the rings. In fact, I'll link the video here where we show you how we design our double rings for encouraging outward growth of the roots of each of our new trees. And looking at the roots here, I can see that it's done just that. It's grown well beyond this inner ring here and out into here, probably out even further. So trying to get this tree dug out is gonna take us a long time. So instead of doing that, we have something that uh, is a little bigger that should help us with this process. I'm just gonna get the tall stuff gone. All right, so instead of having us go through and try to dig this tree out completely, I figure try the equipment that we have at our disposal. So I've never pulled a tree out. Well, I take that back. I've actually pulled some junk trees out with a truck one time and a toe strap. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this chain works first. Um, I think this will be our better option just because it has a higher braking capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically chain this up around the tree, see if I can cinch it nice and tight and then start to pull this tree out. The goal while I'm doing that is to have Lori come back and start snipping the roots back at the first ring or the larger ring. That way we can maintain our rings so we don't have to try to reshape this whole thing and have a planting space for our new tree. So let's see if that actually works out. We'll get this around the tree and then this, this cinches. better than I thought it was gonna. <laughs> I was getting nervous there for a while. That went about as well as it could go, I would say. This is a unique look at how the structure of these fruit trees and the root system is designed. So you can see Lori had snipped a few of these that had gone off into and past the ring, but you can see just how shallow the root system is, but how wide it becomes and just how many of these basically feeder roots immediately start coming out from the tree. Of course, you need to encourage them to do that, but this just gives you a great view of exactly what it looks like after you plant your tree once they start growing really well. And from the looks of this tree, you can see it was a very healthy tree growing very, very strong, which you would expect that because it's rootstock. No. <laughs> Which way are you going? <laughs> it's easier for me this way to get my right hand. Good. You probably want to be a little towards this way. the banks yet. So we always get questions about planting some of the steps that we showed you here. We didn't go over in detail, but kind of give you a few things about this tree. First off, we got it from Reed at RSI Growers in Glendale, Arizona. That is our go-to nursery for the vast majority of the trees that we have here on the farm. Highly encourage you guys to check him out. In fact, I'll link his website down below. 
he's here local, he doesn't ship, so you'd have to be in the Phoenix area basically, or willing to drive to Phoenix to get his trees. This is a new variety that he's testing out. It's called a Texas King Peach. We haven't had it before, so we're hopeful that it lives up to its name. I'm hopeful as well. As far as planting, you notice that we did not plant it very deep. We always plant them just a little bit shallow. That helps to keep the root crown up above the soil. Potted trees are going to naturally settle about one to two inches. So we want to make sure that it remains above ground and we're not burying the root crown, which is where those roots come out. You saw those in the tree we pulled from the ground. In addition, that helps to keep the roots off the harder caliche layers down low. And again, to encourage that outward growth that you saw when that tree was out of the ground. The fertilizer was a granular fertilizer that Reed specifically suggested we plant his trees with. We get it from Fertizona. It's a conventional 15-15-15 fertilizer. We only use that on newly planted trees. Otherwise, it's all organic. But that's what we put inside the hole along with the tree because we will not be fertilizing this tree come February with the rest of our trees. I don't know whether you could pick it up on camera. We did have the tree angled slightly. One of the things with Reed's trees, they're very vigorous, but the trunks are not always straight. This one was actually in really good shape, but we did stake it to try to keep it more vertical. I also did tilt it slightly towards the west. That's because our westerly winds are gonna blow this tree and that happens just about every day. The cage you see here is specifically for our rabbit pressure. We have jackrabbits and cottontail bunnies. They will destroy this tree, so we don't wanna take that chance. This will only be here for about a year or so, and then we'll remove it, just like we have for the rest of the trees here. And of course, heavy, heavy wood chip mulch. We have it down in and around the tree. We're very arid here, very dry. We have very little humidity, even through the winter. So for us, piling that up against the trunk only helps to keep the moisture around that root ball here temporarily. And of course, we're watering in the inside ring. You saw us working on that. It actually will overflow into the outer ring as well because this tree won't need as much water as the rest of the trees on the zone. Once that inner ring fills up, we have it built so that it'll spill over, kind of a little spillway, and go to the outside ring. That way we're continuing to build soil around because of course, again, like you saw today, these roots are gonna grow away from this tree very, very rapidly over the winter. And that's exactly what we want. So this can burst out of dormancy come spring. So hopefully we demystified a few things today for you, especially about the root structure on a healthy fruit tree. Don't get to see that very often, but we got to see that today. So that'll just give you guys a great idea of what you need to encourage your trees to do. And that's to get that outward root growth to really establish firmly and of course, give you a fruitful harvest. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you as a subscriber. We talk about a lot of things here. Obviously fruit trees is an extensive topic for us here because it's one of our passions, but we are a functioning farm. We have livestock, several species, including some additional ones we're bringing on this year. And of course, vegetable gardening as well. So if you know somebody that's into this kind of thing, definitely share the content, it helps us here. Any questions or comments in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free, painless way to help support us here. If you start with that link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Trying to plan this? Not very much. Let's let's find out. Let's see what happens. Okay. This is uh, take one. Do you want me to start cutting? Not yet. Wait till I start pulling it up.